So we've got a, a number of folks trickling in today. Thank you for joining us. Um, I'm Alicia cordes -Mayo. I'm the Communications Director at DEED. Really happy to have all of you with us today. A uh, special welcome to a few folks who are joining us again uh, after being away for a bit. So uh, just a few housekeeping items. We will take your questions at the end. You can use the chat feature or the raise hand function. If you have any technical difficulties, um, you can contact Dawn. Her email is in the chat there and she can help you out. And then uh, if you could please um, keep any devices muted, that'll really help mitigate echoes and um, keep it just a, a nice clean conversation the whole way. So today we have uh, Deputy Commissioner Kevin McKinnon returning, joining us and leading along with Angelina. So I'll turn it over to our Deputy Commissioner. Well, thank you, uh, Alicia, and thanks to all of you for being here with us uh, today for a look at our most recent employment data. Uh, let's start with uh, continued job growth. Our private sector gained 2,500 jobs from November to December, while government lost 1,700 jobs, resulting in uh, a net 800 job gain. This is six straight month of job growth in Minnesota, and it's worth noting that job growth only happens when there are workers to fill open jobs. So for each job added, another person is becoming employed. And clearly our tight labor market is constraining job growth in the state. Minnesota employers are reporting more than 185,000 job openings, according to JOLTS data from November 2023. JOLTS is our job uh, openings and labor turnover survey from the Bureau of Labor Statistics. Those openings aren't included in jobs numbers, so there is room for more job growth if enough workers can be found. And remember, Minnesota already has one of the highest labor force participation rates in the country, so there are fewer people on the sidelines here than in most other states. However, this month we did see a decrease in the labor force. Uh, our labor force decreased by 6,590 people over the month, the third straight month of labor force declines. And just a note that labor force includes those people who are currently working and those who are currently looking for work. With that decline, our labor force participation rate uh, ticked down two tenths of a percentage point to 68.1%. Our labor force participation is still much higher than the nation as a whole. The US labor force uh, declined from November to December with the national labor force participation rate decreasing three tenths of a percentage point to 62 and a half percent. Obviously a decline in labor force numbers is not what we want to see, uh, and we're continuing to work to draw more people into our labor force. And as we look forward, I'd add that we're actually excited as an agency to continue rolling out new or expanded efforts at DEED uh, to work with our workforce development partners to bring more people into the labor force in 2024. Three new initiatives are rolling out soon. We're in the process of identifying partners for two of them now. Uh, one's called our Targeted Populations Workforce Grant Program, and the other is our Drive for Five initiative around five key industries. Uh, the third program, the Clean Economy Equitable Workforce Grant Program, will also roll out very soon. And of course, anyone looking for assistance in finding employment in Minnesota can get that free of charge from CareerForce uh, at careerforcemn.com for more info on that. And finally, our unemployment ticked down again, dropping below 3%. Our unemployment rate uh, ticked down two tenths of a percent to 2.9% in December 2023 from November. The U.S. unemployment rate remained at 3.7% in December. Now, I'm going to uh, turn it over to our Labor Force Information Director, Angelina Wynn, for a deeper dive on our details. Thank you, Kevin. I'm going to share details by super sector now. So about job growth, five super sectors gained jobs over the month, five lost jobs, and one had no change. Um, so the five that gained jobs on a seasonally adjusted basis are leisure and hospitality. They gained 1,800 jobs, which is a 0.7% growth. Trade, transportation, and utilities gained 1,500 jobs, up 0.3%. Construction gained 1,200 jobs, up 0.9%. Mining and logging gained 300 jobs, um, which is a great 4.6% growth. And financial activities gained 100 jobs, up 0.1%. 
The super sector that saw no change over the month is other services. And the five super sectors that lost jobs over the month are government. Uh, they lost 1,700 jobs, down 0.4%. Education and health services lost 1,600 jobs, down 0.3%. Professional and business services lost 600 jobs, um, which is a 0.2% decline. Information lost 100 jobs, down 0.2% and manufacturing lost 100 jobs um, but because the sector that super sector is so big it is really a zero percent change overall minnesota gained 800 jobs over the month on a seasonally adjusted basis um, and translating that to a percentage it's a zero percent change um, the private sector gained 2500 jobs up 0.1 percent but because the government sector lost um, uh, 1,700 jobs, so th therefore the net gain is 800. The month prior um, in our reporting, November, seasonally adjusted job growth was revised down uh, 3,700 jobs. So the final estimate for um, uh, between October and November is that we gained 5,800 jobs rather than the um, preliminary uh, estimate of uh, 9,500 jobs. And as um, Kevin had mentioned, our unemployment rate ticked down to 2.9% for December. Next slide, please. Our labor force size decreased by 6,590 people over the month. And um, of that, the number of employed decreased by 1,797 and the number of unemployed decreased by uh, 4,793. So more people are uh, working, so uh, going coming out of unemployment, um, but the overall uh, number of uh, em employed people went down. Our labor force is now 28,419 people smaller than it was pre-pandemic um, in February 2020. Labor force participation rate um, ticked down two tenths of a percentage point to 68.1%. Um, but even uh, even so, it is still much higher than the national rate. Next slide, please. And over the year, we gained um, more than 50,800 payroll jobs, which is a 1.7% growth. Um, this is a bit slower, but very close to the national growth rate of 1.9%. Our private sector gained um, almost 40,400 jobs, up 1.6%, and the U.S. private sector grew at the same rate. Three notable super sector growth are construction, trade, transportation, and utilities, and mining and logging. So construction continue its growth streak um, uh, for December and over the year gained almost 10,800 jobs, which is a 8.8% growth rate compared to the national rate of 3%. And the strongest growth continued to be in heavy and civil engineering construction with an over the year growth rate of more than 33%. Trade, transportation, and utilities gained uh, more than 14,000 jobs, uh, so growing 2.6% compared to 0.5% nationally. Um, retail trade saw healthy growth at 3.3%. Uh, transportation, warehousing, and utilities had uh, great growth at 3.6%, and wholesale trade was, uh, was flat, so zero, zero change over the year. Mining and logging added 330 jobs, growing 5.2% compared to the national rate of 2.2. So those are our uh, good performers. Um, the not so good performers uh, are the same as we saw um, in the previous few months. Um, so they continue to lose jobs over the year. Um, so financial activities lost um, more than 8,000 jobs over the year, down 4.2% while the U.S. rate grew uh, by 0.4% and losses were consistent in every subsector. Professional and business services lost more than 5,000 jobs, down 1.3%, while the U.S. grew 0.5%. Uh, uh, the biggest declines here were in employment services, uh, decline of 9.1%. 
and computer systems and design, computer systems design and related services down 3.7%. Um, Manufacturing lost almost 4,000 jobs over the year, um, down 1.2%, while the U.S. grew 0.2%, and all subsectors here um, saw over the year decline. Um, information lost almost 2,000 jobs, down 4.1%. Uh, again, all subsectors uh, under this uh, category saw decline, um, but the U.S. also experienced decline um, in information, down 2.2%. Next slide, please. Average hourly wages for all private sector workers um, increased 36 cents to $36.48 in December for, for Minnesota. Um, over the year, average hourly earnings increased uh, $1.05, which is a 3% growth. And over three years since December 2020, um, they've grown 13%. Nationally, um, U.S. private sector average hourly wages grew 21 cents to uh, $34.20. And over the year, they grew 4.1%. And over three years, they grew 14.6%. Compare that to inflation. Um, inflation in December was 3.1%. And over three years, um, almost uh, 18%. So overall, Minnesota's uh, wage is still more than $2 um, higher than the U.S. average hourly wage, um, even though our wage growth rate is a little slower than the um, national rate. And Alicia, back to you. All right. Well, thanks so much, Anna, Angelina. We did have um, a final slide up there, and Kevin will emphasize this as well. But just a reminder uh, to all the press on the call, we do to annual benchmarking, we do not have a February uh, press event, a press call. So January 2024 data available on March 7th. That'll be the next one. And then February 2024 data will be March 21st. We'll make sure we uh, send some reminders. But at this point, we'd like to invite questions. Um, anyone with an initial question here, we're happy to take them. Carlita, welcome back. Uh, over to you. Hi, guys. Thanks um, for doing this call. Um, yeah, I guess um, two questions. Uh, maybe it's three. Um, so first of all, um, can you talk a little bit? I mean, it seems like we ended the year uh, a little soft or not as um, quite as strong as we had the previous months when we saw a much um, um, bigger number of jobs overall added. So we're just curious if you can give them pers some perspective on what happened there. Um, are we just normally a little bit softer in December, given like the Minnesota, you know, weather? Um, and uh, and also what happened? What do you think happened with government jobs? Why did you think you saw a big drop there? Um, and then my second question is about um, the over the year growth you saw like in construction, like what's going on with construction? Why are we like seeing such a boom in jobs there? And like what's going on in financial activities? How come that seems to be like a perennial underperformer here in Minnesota? So what do you think is happening in financial activities? All right, great. Thank you, Kavita, for your great questions. Um, so your first and second question is uh, really getting at the same uh, answer, so I will answer them together. Um, so for December, uh, we, we are still uh, gaining jobs, and yes, it is a smaller gain than previous months. Um, and that was mostly, be, uh, as you mentioned, mostly because governments um, lost a, a good chunk of, of jobs uh, in December. Um, and all of that loss was in local government. Um, and it could be um, because we had a much warmer December uh, this year than usual. Um, like all the activities that are uh, re that gov local government is responsible for in terms of like snow removal, um, uh, plow trucks, clearing, clearing roads, the icing, um, those jobs uh, were affected because of the warmer weather. Um, so that's that's answering your two questions, your first two questions um, about construction over the year growth um, heavy. And so construction has been doing well in 2023. Um, 
and the and heavy and civil engineering construction has been consistently the highest growth uh, subsector under construction. And um, that's because of uh, more investments, both for, at the federal level and uh, the state level um, in, in public uh, construction projects. Um, so that explains a part of the um, good growth that we've seen there. Um, for specifically for heavy and, and civil engineering construction this December, um, again, it goes back to weather because this December was so much warmer than December 2022. Um, a lot of construction workers continue working um, into December, whereas, you know, the prior year they would have um, slowly paused or stopped their, their, their uh, work. Um, so that's why it's such a huge employment um, jump between December 2022 and December 2023 for um, heavy and civil engineering construction. So two factors, um, government investment and uh, warmer weather. And then um, in terms of financial activities, um, it's, you know, um, it hasn't been doing well in 2023, as you've noted. Some um, some months we've seen, um, so a lot of these subsectors under financial activities have experienced job loss consistently. Um, some months we would see, um, let me look at the list here. We would see like, um, credit intermediation or um, uh, real estate and, and rental and leasing do better than other subsectors. Um, but for December, they all they all lost um, they, they all lost jobs um, consistently. So it could be because of um, higher interest rate and slower activities um, related to to that uh, super sector. Great. So like just kind of following up, it seems like the milder December was both good and bad for jobs, right? Like good for, um, you know, construction jobs, bad for government jobs. Um, any other like sectors where you saw like the milder weather maybe impacting jobs um, for December? Or are those two of the, the two ones that mostly stand out? Yeah, weather wise, um, those are the ones that stand out. Um, in December, because of the holidays, um, retail uh, is is another subsector that uh, we see growth, and we did we we saw what we would expect to see. Um, retail trade grew um, uh, in December. Yeah. Thanks, Angelina. Kavita, any additional follow up on that? I anything think that's else? it for right now. If anybody okay. else has anything else? Sure. Anyone else with questions, you can drop them in the chat as well, if you'd like. Um, if nobody else has anything else, Angelina, I had one that question, you know, I've been just coming back from leave. Um, so I was just curious, you know, what, when did Minnesota, what month did we sort of, um, regain, fully regain pre-pandemic levels of jobs? Like when were we considered fully recovered? Was that when did we hit that benchmark? Yeah, that's a great question. So we we had it in our press release the month that we uh, surpassed one hundred percent, and then it went back down and it went back up, and so it was it fluctuated for for a little while. But for the last four or five months, we've been consistently over one hundred percent. So I would have to look. Um, look back at our press release to tell you the very first month when we announced that um, we had recovered all jobs lost due to the pandemic. But then okay. keep in mind that in the following months, we, it went down. Um, yeah, it went down. And similarly, it seems like um, last month we were like outpacing the U.S. growth, but now with the revised numbers, it sounds like maybe we were a little bit under the U.S. growth for last month. Um, did that flip flop a little bit too? Also, great question. I will have to. I looked at our own Minnesota's revised numbers. I haven't looked at the U.S. revised numbers for November, so I will um, take a look and 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 get back to you later, Kavita. Okay, but overall for the year, it sounds like we are slightly um, 
uh, the the U.S. was slightly outpacing us, right, for the whole year in terms of yes. growth. Yeah, one point seven versus one point nine. Yeah, still pretty decent, right? Given the fact that we had a slower recovery coming out of the pandemic, so it seems like we had a slower recovery, but then it seems to have kind of picked up a little bit more this year. Like, what do you think has been happening this year? I mean, I haven't. I actually don't remember the numbers for last year, but it just seems like we've been a little bit more robust. Maybe not in terms of numbers, but it just seems like overall the there was it's been a positive trend this year. Yeah, like overall, 2023 has been a good year for job growth, um, consistent job growth every month um, and a, a little slower than the national rate, but I'm not concerned about that. It is still very um, a competitive rate. And when Minnesota is ranked, like when we look at um, all 50 states, our job growth is right there in the middle. We rank 24th um, in the nation for, for um, job growth. So I would credit that to, you know, we have a good well-educated workforce, a really highly engaged labor force, um, much higher than than the, I think we rank six in the nation for labor force participation rate. Um, people come here to work, they stay here to work, um, and our, our average uh, pay is higher than the, significantly higher than the, the national average. So we have a, a great economy for workers uh, as far as the data tells us. Um, yeah, that's how I would summarize Minnesota. Great, thanks guys. <clears throat> yeah. Any other questions or Kevin, anything you want to add on that one? I think Angelina covered that well. I think she did. Yeah, okay. Great. Well, please, uh, please do feel feel free to follow up with me uh, by email should you have any remaining questions once you've had a chance to process a little bit. And otherwise, uh, Kevin, I'll turn it over to you to close us out today. All right. Well, again, thank you to the media who participated today. Um, we're really happy to see another uh, month of job growth. We continue to work on engaging more people in our labor force. Uh, and finally, as Alicia mentioned earlier, uh, our next employment uh, release uh, is slated for March 7th um, uh, due to annual benchmarking. Uh, and then uh, we will uh, then do February's employment data on March 21st. So thanks again to everyone uh, for attending today and hope you have a great day.